Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I am back on House Flipper. I'm just bouncing on my bed um, in the abandoned house. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. So I've been playing this game for a little while now. Um, and I've done, a, I've mentioned in one of the videos that, in, in this video actually, that I've done a couple of little uh, tricks. Um, so I think you probably will have worked out that um, putting the kettle on the oven and putting these things on top of the, the units here, those food cans on top of the fridge uh, and the cans up there um, and the obvious things like the splashback for the, uh, the oven and the splashback up there are all, um, are all a little bit tricky to do less so with the splashbacks those are pretty easy but so i thought i'd um, um and actually when i started playing this game um because i often kind of want to do stuff uh more than what more than you can do uh in the limits of the game i, I did a so i did a little bit of looking around to see if there was any kind of tips and tricks videos and there's not really anything that gives you anything um beyond the real basics so I'm going to keep this very short, um, and I'm going to do some. I'm going to take you through seven tips and tricks that I have discovered, and um, that you might find useful. Um, and I may do another one of these at some point in the future if I find more. But um, so yeah, I'm going to take you through these. So if you um, any of these you like, um, or you want to see more from me, then don't forget to sub and stuff. Obviously, once you've watched the awesome video, um, yeah. So sub and like and share and all that good stuff. I really appreciate. And help and helping to get the channel growing and stuff right guys so no further delays let's take you through okay so tip one so this is a um, this is a stall but this actually applies to a few places so anything that you can't put um, a placeable on so if I want to put a plant on this for example it won't let me do that it doesn't consider that stall to be a surface that it can put things on um, these are um, and there will be a bunch of things that are, but there are also a bunch of things that aren't, annoyingly. So those um, little shoe boxes and things aren't. So the trick to doing this is very simple. Um, what I've found works best is to get the table, put the table over the top of it. So you have the table underneath, or the, the original the little stool underneath. Uh, and you line the table up, the pot up with the table underneath and you just sell it and it just drops onto the stool and as long as you've got something underneath it um, you can basically drop any object onto anything so that will work exactly the same with those as it will with the stools as it will with any other number of places when it comes to higher items so in terms of the this and the um, things up there there's still a way to do it so what you need for this this is a, takes a little bit more patience um, because it's quite tricky but if you get books so books will stack on top of each other so if you stack enough books up you will be able to get so we'll pop we'll actually just pop I think we'll put a plate up here rather than disturb my kettle again. If you get enough books stacked up, um, you can kind of edge the books over towards where you want them to as well. If you look see how I've done that, I've kind of um, placed them slightly off centre. Um, so if I grab this plate just to show you that I can't put that up there normally, it just clips through. But I can put it on top of the I can put it on top of the book. So if I now you don't have to actually remove many of these because it will it kind of just glitch away. And there you go. Okay, tip number two you see in front of you. Um and this is I don't not entirely sure what the practical purposes of this are yet, but I may have quite come across one. Um but you can make there is possible to make things float. Um, you have to be a bit careful not to so it's not something you can knock down from up there but if I was to um, 
if I was to place something underneath that and remove it, um, I think that probably would fall down. And so you've got to be a little bit careful. Um, and I'll show you what I've, how I've done this. So it's actually pretty simple. All you need is a pillar. Um, you need a shelf or an up shelf. Uh, and you just place the shelf. Uh, oh, actually I need two walls by the looks of it. You place the shelf on the wall. You place the object that you want to place. Uh, so let's say, let's just get something from in here. There's got to be something that is placeable on a on a shelf. Uh, you place that. Is that too big? No, maybe it's too big. That one. Go with the. Let's go with the box. Just not high enough. There we go. Place the box on the shelf, and then be sure to kind of come around the back of um, the wall because you don't want to hit this side of the wall. If you hit this side of the wall, you'll knock the shelf out and the box down. But if you take the box, if you take the wall out now, the shelf will fall, but the box will stay, or the floating object will stay. Um, so I'll show you what I I'll show you what I've been doing with that. So that allows you to do all kinds of crazy things like this. <laughs> so um, I'm actually recording this just before Halloween. So I think you'll probably have seen this video before Halloween. Um, but obviously I've got this is my this was supposed to be my kind of spooky house. I'm not going to do much more with it than this. I just I thought it was an interesting idea. Um, and if it were actually dark outside, um, it looks kind of cool in here from the right angles. But it looks like it's, yeah, it looks like they're kind of uh, possessed. Uh, and all I actually did was, um, and this kind of takes us on to another one of the, um, the points coming up. But I took a picture of the room. So I took a picture of the room and then I used that picture on the back wall here and on the side walls. So from the from this kind of view it looks like it's kind of going on and on and on um, and yeah so all this is done with just that same method of just put the shelf put a, a wall up a shelf on it and then um, put things on that shelf and then demolish the shelf tip number three so we're back in our little office here so this is a pretty simple one um, it is about and if you don't realize this this is actually can save you quite a lot of money um, so if you want to, I've mentioned this in another video before, but if you haven't seen that. Um, so these cost me £10, 13 pence every time I buy them, paint. If I use all of that paint can, that paint is, so as I obviously as I paint with it, you'd think there's less paint in there and therefore it's worth less. But it's not. Um, it's actually worth exactly the same amount to sell it as it was before. The game doesn't take any value away from that. So this one is, is now worth £8.6p and this one is still worth £8.6p. Even though I've used almost well, a, a, a bit of that. So, um, however, an empty can is worth nothing. You can't sell it. So you are always better off using right down to you're always better off buying actually more than one because you're getting almost i guess it's almost 75 percent of the value of this object back when you sell it even if you use like eight tenths of it nine tenths of a of a can you will still get eight pounds six p back so you're always better off buying them um buying more than you need and selling and the same applies the same will apply to tiles and the same applies to the same applies to wall coverings so yeah always use always buy more than you need um, and uh, and sell those just before you complete the complete the stack of tiles or empty the um, paint can uh, it doesn't work obviously in the house renovations because you can't always sell or so in the jobs 
um, it doesn't always work because you can't always sell these objects even though you've bought them you can't always sell the paint you've bought you have to leave it tip number four so um, basically this tip is about uh, keeping brick so there is a texture there is a perk uh, in the building menu uh, it's building 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 uh, mason so mason level one um, will build walls which are already painted um, if you don't upgrade that perk or if you don't add that perk you'll be able to keep this texture this nice brick texture there is no way of getting that brick texture back um, and if you look um, at what you can build so if we look in the uh, wall coverings where is it wall panels the closest you can get to brick or to that texture it's not anywhere near as nice um, so if I just let's just put one of these up somewhere uh, I don't want to put it on there because I'll have to re I'll have to redo it so if you look at that this is left over from another tip if you get that texture compared to that texture so it's nowhere near as sharp or as good and um, this is a far more interesting texture so and if you if you upgrade that perk um, just to show you that this one is not any better either if you upgrade that perk you won't be able to um, you won't at any stage be able to get back to this brick there is no way of doing it there's no way of, of choosing not to paint a wall or to build a wall with a uh, without having paint on it it will always be white so don't upgrade that perk tip number five is um, about using custom pictures um, to basically to, to think outside the box with custom pictures so um, I've done this in a bunch of places already but uh, things like splashbacks and things so don't think of custom pictures just as pictures that they can be used for lots of things so that's a custom picture that's a custom picture um, I want to create a bathroom cabinet so this choosing the right picture so just go to Google find yourself a picture that works and there you go you've got a bathroom cabinet and what often works really well is to go with one that's got a they've got a frame around it or add a frame in Photoshop or something but also try and find ones that kind of fit um, into the room so they don't look like they're pictures so this is this I chose this one specifically for example because it's got the same colors in those in that uh, picture as it's got as we've got here so they look like they actually could be in the room so yeah using custom pictures okay tip number six just follows on from that last one actually um, it's just an idea that basically you can create custom mirrors um, and they'll work as well as these ones I mean this is a mirror that's not really reflecting very much at all it's got a bit of light there um, it does seem to work better in some situations I think maybe because it's got the light there it's not working that well but what you can do with the gallery is kind of cheat a mirror so I want to put a mirror up here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump up on the counter um, and I want to make basically put myself in the position that the mirror is going to be. Um, so it's a bit more of an advanced one, this one, but bear with me. Um, so I'm going to stand in the position that an idea that you don't want anything kind of blocking you, but I think this will be all right. So I need to then crouch down because I want to be getting a, a mirrored shot of this. Um, and if so I'm holding C to crouch down. If you then press the M key, and um, then you can take uh, you can take this the screenshot or the, the camera picture from from crouched. So I take my picture. Um, I've already done this, so I won't do it again. Um, and then what I need to do is obviously for a mirror to look realistic, when you put it up on the wall, it's actually going to be the other way around to this. So I have flipped mine in Photoshop, or actually in GIMP, which is free. Um, and I had, I actually went online and got a picture of a picture of a mirror and I've replaced the center of that mirror 
with my image from my gallery. So if I now mount this on the wall, then in theory, we are seeing the mirrored image of what's over there. And it won't, I mean, it doesn't look 100% realistic because obviously I'm moving around in it, but that's the same as these. You don't see yourself in those. Um, I think it probably takes a bit of fiddling to kind of get it right and get the image right of them, but I haven't done anything to that image. I've just, as I said, I just flipped it. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward. I think you can do that in most things, even not not even in uh, maybe in Windows picture editor you can do that. So you just got to kind of get it into a position where it looks like it's kind of realistically reflecting. Um, so yeah, that's that one. Tip number seven. So this is just a simple one, but um, I think a lot of new people don't really realise this, but. Be careful when you go into a room or into a house um, what you're selling uh, because not all of the objects um, are ones that you can buy again. Um, so there's a bunch of tools here, for example, um, that I can't buy. Uh, so if I was to go into the room and just sell all this stuff, then um, I've missed out on the opportunity to use those objects. So yeah, just when you go, and there's, there's actually quite a lot of these objects. I think at some point they probably will um, just add these to the game. I don't see why they wouldn't, but um, so these aren't these aren't purchasable at all. Um, so yeah, just be careful when you go into a, into a into a house what you buy and uh, and don't buy. Even this actually, this broken mirror is kind of cool might be useful for something all right guys so that is all of the tips uh, and thank you for watching take it easy mm -hmm.